In this video, I'm going to show you the one simple diagram that incorporates all of the six common core processes in app to help you better chase your values even when your yucky pain monster shows up. Look at that thing, he looks pretty creepy. All right, let's roll that intro and get this thing started because this is awesome. So the matrix is a really simple diagram that you can actually use all of the six common core processes and acceptance and commitment therapy all together in one diagram. Now, I know that sounds like a really lofty goal, like, yeah, you can do all of ACT in one diagram, but really, it's all here in this one diagram. It's really cool. And I'm not saying that we're going to be reductionist about ACT and that it's simply just this one straightforward thing and that's the whole intervention. No way, there's a lot more to it. But this diagram is an easy way, I should say that differently. This diagram is a simple, but not easy way, of delivering ACT. And the whole idea behind this is that it gives you a springboard to do a lot of different interesting work in acceptance and commitment therapy. Let's get started with the ACT matrix. I'm actually going to show you a little bit of an adaptation that my colleague Jessica Borshock and I call the Life Map. We've used this in our own books, publications, as well as in pilot studies that we've run. It's really simple. You're gonna start with a horizontal line. And that's it for the art portion of the activity. Horizontal line, arrowheads on either side. Now, the reason why we throw up arrowheads is because we want to describe two different directions that you can move in your life. The first direction is where you chase who and what matters most to you in your life. So follow along at home, like actually think about who and what matters most to you in your life. The things, the qualities that you want your life to be about, that you want to chase, the things that are delicious to you, that you have an appetite for, the qualities that you want your life to be about. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we're going to talk about the difficult things that show up inside of you, the painful thoughts, feelings, sensations, or memories that actually get in the way of you chasing who and what matters most to you. These are the things that you would want to escape. And what I mean by escape are the difficult thoughts, feelings, sensations, and memories that actually get in the way of you chasing who and what matters most to you. So what are the things in your life that you might want to escape? It could be chronic negative thinking, painful sensations that show up in your body, ruminating about you know, what could be happening, or painful thoughts about things that have happened in the past. Any difficult stuff that shows up for you that actually gets in the way, things that you would want to escape, avoid, control. This is what we look to track over here. Rather than writing down a smattering of random examples, I'm just going to draw my yucky feelings monster over here. He looks rather menacing, doesn't he? So this represents all of the painful stuff that shows up in your life, the things that you would actually work to avoid, the things that you want to escape. And of course, we wanna track what do we actually do when we attempt to escape all of this yucky stuff in our lives. When the difficult, painful thoughts, feelings, sensations, or memories show up for you, how do you try to escape it? What do you do? And at first blush, your escape behaviors might not actually be problematic. I mean, remember, if a building is burning or there's a giant fire, you might want to run away from it. Different contexts call for different behaviors. What we want to focus on is not pathologizing ourselves for simply trying to escape the painful things that show up in our lives, but really pay attention. Like, what do you do when your painful thoughts, feelings, sensations, and memories show up for you? How do you try to escape it? What do you do to control or to avoid it? That's what we really want to pay attention to. Because remember, this diagram is all about, not judgmentally, let's just look at how our behavior works in all these different situations. Now that we have the behaviors that we do to try and escape our pain, now we want to focus on what are the behaviors that we could be doing or that we're already doing that help us chase who and what matters most to us.
These are the behaviors that you're already doing or that you could be doing that actually help you chase who and what matters most to you, that help you engage with the life that's delicious and important to you. So there we have it. On one side of the spectrum, chasing who and what matters most to us. What does that feel like for you? In my life, when I'm engaging in behaviors that help me chase the type of life that's important to me, when I'm walking my dog, chilling at home and watching Netflix and just like enjoying some yummy food, mm, that feels satisfying to me. It feels relaxing and peaceful. I feel like I'm in my element. And when I'm escaping the painful thoughts, feelings, sensations, and memories that I don't want to have, what does that feel like for me? It feels like, well, I'm trying to run from a burning building. It feels like I'm just like escaping in the short term. So these are things like when I'm watching Netflix in order to distract myself because I'm feeling anxious about writing another chapter. Or maybe I'm worried about a friend of mine and have tried to you know, text him and I've tried calling him and he hasn't responded. So I'm starting to have this thought like, ooh, like maybe I did something to offend them. And what does that feel like for me? Uh, I can tell you, not very good. It actually makes me feel worse in the long term. I want you to do the exact same thing. Just take a moment here to pause and reflect. What does it feel like to chase your values? What does it feel like to try and escape your pain? Very simple stuff. And the heart of this work is all about paying attention. What is your behavior under the control of? Are you chasing your values or are you attempting to escape something that you don't wanna feel? And how's that working in any given situation that you find yourself in? You see, the core of this work, paying attention, noticing, it's kinda of like when you go to the mall and you look at the map at the mall and the map has a little red dot or a little gold star, and it inevitably says, you are here. That's what this diagram is all about. It's about putting you at the center of this perspective. You are here. And I know that's dead simple, but remember, it's about having you pay attention to your experience on purpose. ACT is all about giving you or your clients processes to empower your life. You see, you being at the center of this perspective is about you being able to pay attention to your experience so that you're more easily able to choose what you do next. And isn't that important? That's our definition of freedom. To be free from being governed by our pain, to get out of this cycle of negative reinforcement, just constantly trying to escape what we don't want to feel by attempting to control, escape, or hide from this stuff. Avoid it, and instead, paying attention. Let's be purposeful in actually looking at what our experience is about, and then you get to choose what you do next. And hear me when I say, not all behaviors that are about chasing your values are inherently good. Like, sometimes it's really important to run away from something hazardous or dangerous. If you hear a loud crashing sound behind you and somebody screams, get out of the way, and as you turn around, you like take a breath and you're noticing a Honda Civic careening towards you at a high rate of speed, I want you to get out of the way. Like, that's important. Escaping painful stuff is actually evolutionarily essential. You need to get out of the way. You need to run away. You need to escape. This perspective is about helping you to pay attention to when attempts to escape maybe aren't working for you. Asking yourself, well, what do I actually want my life to be about? What would that look like? And clarifying that. And that can actually be a really hard question to answer for so many different people. When we're in our darkest moments, our world doesn't seem accessible over here. And that's why we actually want people to connect with who and what is most important to you. Take some time to acknowledge that. Think about the qualities that you wanna be about. So let me just pause here for a second and go through each one of those processes that we're actually talking about from this ACT, Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, perspective. When we ask someone who and what is most important to them, what we're really doing is looking for values. And we ask somebody, hey, what's the difficult stuff that shows up that gets in the way of you chasing your values? What are the painful thoughts, feelings, sensations, and memories that you encounter that can actually hook you, that can mangle you, capsize you, and stops you from engaging in the life that's actually meaningful to you? Well, we're looking for doing some diffusion work here. What's the stuff that you get fused with? And I mean, for me, honestly, drawing my painful thoughts, feelings, sensations, and memories, my own anxiety, my own self-judgment and procrastination as a yucky feelings monster, that's pretty diffusing for me, straight up. And when we say, what do you do? How do you try to attempt to escape, avoid, and control? What we're looking for is the behaviors that we wanna be a little more accepting of. Here we have our acceptance process. Chasing your values, doing the behaviors that actually help you connect with who and what is most important to you, that's all about commitment. And when we ask you to pay attention to your experience, 
What does it feel like to move in this direction? What does it feel like to move in this direction? And just like take a step back, notice that you have all of these different experiences. That's self as context. You see, when you look at this perspective, you can see that you're here. This isn't who you are. This isn't who you are. These are things that you choose. This is stuff that shows up for you. But you go here at the center. That's a self as context move. And paying attention to your experience, actually acknowledging what this is like, what this is like, paying attention to those experiences, noticing them on purpose, that's about the present moment. So here we've got all of the six processes in ACT. I promised you at the beginning of this video, we were gonna look at all six of those, right? This diagram is one easy way of doing all six of those complex processes. So what we could say is that the matrix is a way of doing acceptance and commitment therapy. It's a way of doing all of those processes. It's a methodology. We have our values. We have the fused content that we wanna defuse from. We have our acceptance that shows up here with the difficult behaviors that we could be doing to try and escape this painful stuff. We have commitment towards who and what is most important to us. We have the self as context, observing this thing, seeing that you go here, that you are not your pain. You are not your trauma history. And you don't rigidly have to be the most amazing parent ever, the best author who's the most committed and writes 1500 words a day, right? I mean, those might be values that you have, but you go here, you're at the center of this point of view. You're separate from all this stuff. You're the observer of it. And finally, that you can be here now in the present moment and sort all these different things. You can choose, author what you want your life to be about. You can notice all this painful stuff that shows up for you. You can reflect on behaviors that you've attempted to escape this stuff with. You can reflect on or plan new behaviors that can help you connect with the life that's most important to you. That's all six of the processes right there in one simple diagram. Now, I like that joke that this whole perspective is simple. It really is simple, but it's not easy. For a lot of people, paying attention to your experience, practicing this more aware, this awoken, mindful way of being is really hard. It brings you in contact. It invites you to look at all of this yucky stuff and to really ask yourself, like, in the presence of that, what do I actually want to do? What do I want to be about? And that can be really hard work. Acceptance and commitment therapy is hard work. I like this perspective because it makes all of those six processes simple. I use this with almost all of my clients. I'd be lying if I told you that like for me as a clinician, this didn't make my whole life a whole heck of a lot simpler. But not only that, but think about it this way. It gives you something to come back to, a common language. If you do this with your spouse tonight, you could have conversations about your relationship. What's important to us in our relationship? Do we want to be saving money for retirement or do we want to live it up right now? How do we want to be as parents towards our children? How do we want to be in a relationship with one another? You can have a really interesting conversation around your values as a couple and author them on purpose. It's natural to have differences with other people. Maybe you do this with your team or in your organization. I've done this in a number of different organizational settings and it's been wildly effective to actually take some time, slow down, author on purpose what you want your values to be about. And look at what makes this hard because there's going to be difficult stuff that's going to show up for you. If you've ever loved somebody, the fear of rejection or loss, what if they die? What if they cheat on you? I mean, there's going to be all of these different things that show up for you that get in the way of you connecting with them. If you value the team that you're on, what if somebody on your team betrays you? What if someone on your team decides that they find an offer somewhere else better? Or what if somebody that you really care about hurts you? and betrays you or does something that violates your trust. And if you were reacting to this, if you didn't want to feel this, if you didn't want to have this in your life, what would you be doing to escape it? These are really important conversations. And yes, we can pathologize ourselves and say, well, look at how awful you are for engaging in all these escape behaviors. But at the end of the day, remember, escape behaviors are natural. And paying attention to them on purpose empowers us to start taking some responsibility for our behavior and choosing what we want our lives to be about. And last but not least, of course, acknowledging what you're already doing that's working, that helps you connect with your values, but also choosing new behaviors, forging a new path towards a life that's meaningful for you. And this whole perspective of paying attention 
is in and of itself a valuable task. That's a process of being in the present moment and choosing all of this stuff. I think it's obvious that there's value in it. Now remember, this is a simplified version of Kevin Polk's ACT matrix. This is a little project that I've been working on called the Life Map, where I take some of the components of the matrix and present them in a little bit more of a linear kind of reduced way. Now, if you're interested in taking a deeper dive into the matrix, definitely check out, there's a number of resources. I'll definitely link to them down in the description below. And also remember that Kevin and I, Kevin, the originator of the matrix, are actually running an online course called the Essential Workshop to the ACT matrix. That's a whole lot of fun where you get to work with us over eight weeks looking at how to actually do a deep dive into this thing. It's a lot of fun and we show you how to apply it in all different kinds of situations. I hope that you find ACT useful and that you might be able to use this simple little diagram in your practice. Experiment with it, have some fun with it, and make it your own. I'm really proud to say, like for myself and my colleague and co-author Jessica Borshock, that when we adapted Kevin's ACT matrix and did our own kind of linear thing with it, not only was he supportive of it, but he actually wrote the foreword to the book. I mean, this guy's totally living his own values and saying, take my work, disassemble it, and make it your own. How cool is that? Definitely join us. The ACT matrix can be such a powerful tool to empower you in the work that you do in any setting that you work in. If you're interested in learning more about this, you don't have to be a clinician like myself. You can apply this in nearly any kind of situation. I've seen teachers use it. I've seen coaches use it. All different people in different situations. We just want you to be able to bring ACT to whatever setting you're in to spread the six core processes that we know help benefit people to increase their quality of life. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Don't forget to check the description for links to online workshops and definitely download my free life map ebook. It'll be a huge resource for yourself to learn how to use the life map and also experiment with it on yourself. See how it fits you first. I mean, this is an experiential approach to learning and definitely subscribe and hit that like button. It's super reinforcing to me, causes me to make more of these videos for you. Thank you so much.